What's going on everybody? It is Juan from Raven Drone Solutions here with another video. Now, in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about why pilots need to be very careful how they price their services. So, if that sounds interesting, let's get right to it. All right, now, um, I've mentioned this a couple other times in other videos of mine about pricing your services and, and, and you know, like making money and stuff like that, and I apologize for the glare. Um, but the thing is, there's a lot of things that pilots need to be careful with when it comes to pricing their services. One thing that I've seen a lot of is either pilots, they price themselves way too low, like to the point where I'm like, look, you're not just hurting yourself, you're hurting everybody else because you're kind of creating a standard uh, of what other people should expect. And you're basically, uh, it almost looks like you're a hobbyist instead of somebody that's actually serious about making money. And if you're in the drone industry, if you've got your license and all that stuff, you should be more focused on making good money. Whether it's you're working by yourself as a DSP or you're trying to do something bigger, you should be focused on making money. That's just, that's just like that, that's just no brainer. Uh, and unfortunately, there's a lot of people that, because they're new to entrepreneurship, which I am too, like don't, don't feel ashamed of it. And, and you know, I've made mistakes in my pricing as well. Um, but a lot of guys, yeah, they, they hurt themselves because they don't price their services the right way. Um, and some people realize after their first few jobs that, okay, wow, I gotta make adjustments, and other people don't. I personally have have had to make adjustments to my to my pricing. Sometimes I had to price a few things lower because it's just you know I had to remain competitive, and also because it just didn't make sense charging charging what I was charging in certain areas. But then another thing is I had a I had to up the price quite a bit because I was like, okay, no, like this is it costs me it's costing me money and it's eating into my profits. And you know, after all is said and done, it's like I'm not really taking much home. So definitely you have to you have to price your services the right way and a lot of times what, what I see is pilots will price it very low and they don't take into account all the miscellaneous stuff now one of the things that you notice very quickly as a drone service provider is you're on the road a lot if you haven't noticed a lot of my videos are it's because I'm on the road and yeah that's because I'm pretty much driving the majority of the time. Uh, a lot of guys actually, especially the more the, the more experienced guys, they'll tell you they spend more than half of their time, you know, away from home at a hotel. Uh, that's something you got to factor in as well because that's that's money that, that you're spending. Unless if the person that's contracting you has already paid for your housing, I mean your your lodging or whatever, you, know, you got to pay for that yourself and you got to factor that in. Uh, and you know, for example, and I'm just using real estate because that's the that's the most entry level thing that a lot of guys uh, do uh, when it comes to drone services. Now, let's just say you team up with somebody like I do, and they do the interior stuff, you do the exterior. You know, gets done a lot quicker, and you know, uh, you get to specialize in what you specialize. They specialize in what they specialize, and everybody's happy, right? Well, to me, even just a simple real estate shoot. It could take quite a while, and it's not just, it's not just, hey, let me just fly the drone, fly it around a bit, take some cute pictures and videos, and then that's it, I'm done. No, actually, it's it's a lot, there's a lot more work involved with that. Um, as a matter of fact, the last shoot that I did, and I partnered up with my dad, because my dad has his own interior photography, like his own real estate photography business. I just focus on drones, that is it. Well, first, we had to drive to the location, and... We live in Miami, so we had to drive all the way to Boca Raton. Boca Raton is an hour away. That's not that. That's not that close. Okay. So we got to set time aside for that. That time that we set aside is time that we can't be somewhere else doing other work, or at least me. Uh, for me, I don't just do uh, real estate. I also do just other video production stuff, and I also do a lot of cell tower inspections, things like that. Well, yeah, the time that I set aside for that is time that I can't do something else, so I gotta factor that in. So even if the shoot just takes one hour, which it never never happens, even if the shoot just takes one hour, well, that's three hours right there at the very least, and that's if you're rushing it. 
just to get to the location, do the shoot, and come back. And that's if you have no delays, no traffic, no nothing. That never happens, okay? So for me to just do a real estate shoot in Boca Raton, because to me, I'm not just gonna say, well, no, if it's not within five minutes, I'm not doing it. Well, of course not, dude. Like, you gotta go wherever you gotta go, and you gotta charge appropriately. Okay, so for me, just to do that real estate shoot, all right, it took an hour to get there. All right, now we gotta, we gotta do the walk through the house. We gotta set everything up because a lot of times things are not set up. And you know, we try to tell the realtor or whatever, but there's only so much they could do. Uh, you know, there's only so much they're able to control. So, okay, I, I, we go, we set everything up. You know, my, my dad or just anybody who I'm working with, they're doing their thing. All right, I'm outside, I'm setting up. I'm making sure that everything is, that I'm, that I'm clear to fly. I'm not around any uh, regional airports, and if I am, I gotta keep a lookout for what's happening. Uh, I gotta make sure, I gotta, I gotta ensure that I'm not gonna hit anything. And yeah, like for example, some of these places, yeah, there's a lot of uh, telephone wires, there's a lot of uh, bushes, there's a lot of obstacles that you gotta keep in, that you gotta keep into consideration. And you know, a lot of people don't think about these things. Okay, to the average person, you know, that see me flying a drone, they think I'm just doing this for fun and that I'm not like, you know, I don't really, it's not a serious job. And, and when they see the preparation, you know, they're like, oh, wow, okay, like this is actually, this is actually serious work. I'm like, yes, it's actual serious work because you know, if you want, if you want to get the value out of it, well, that, that costs money. Um, and when I mean valley, I mean like for example, when we go and, sh and we go and showcase this property because you know we t we took these amazing shots. Well, the realtor can really make a good profit because they're like, well, look at what this house has to offer. Look at all the lo look at the location. Look at this. Look at that. Instead of just a bunch of bland pictures that they post on on you know the internet. So for me to actually do a good job and you know do it right the first time, so I don't have to come back. Okay, well, that requires preparation. So when I go, all right, prepare the, 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 the place, we do everything we gotta do, okay? I go and I, 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 take the, I take the aerial pictures and I start doing the videos, if that's what the customer wanted. The customer wanted basically the full service. So as, as my dad was doing the interior stuff, doing Matterport and all that stuff, I was actually doing the rest. So I was doing orbits, I was doing reveal shots, backing out, this is actually by a lake, they wanted to showcase that. So I did some really cool shots, I'm gonna post about this uh, later on. Um, but, you know, I go, I go I go from very up high uh, on top of the lake, go uh, sweep down, I'm almost, like I'm, I'm very close to the water, and I go in and like I stop right as I'm about to enter the front door. And then from there, that's when I go with the FPV shot and you know, with, I'm sorry, with my DJI Avada, and I start doing a cool like FPV uh, fly um, fly through the, the whole property, right? Very cool, very impressive. However, that also takes time. It takes preparation because not only did I have to like know where everything is located, it's also the fact that I had to practice, and I had to practice it at least two three times to make sure that I wasn't going to hit anything, because a lot of times you lose signal you, and. You, know, you lose the GPS mode, whatever the case might be, and well, you gotta mitigate for these things. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta account for the fact that you know the drone, the drone can crash. And there's been sometimes where I've, I've, you know, there was no way around it. And yeah, I might have crashed a few times, and we just edited it where it looked, it looked nice, and it wasn't, it, you know, you didn't really notice it. But as I said, these things take time. So it's not just also getting to the location, flying the mission, which actually took a couple hours to, to really do it right. And also the fact that when we came back, we had to do post-processing. Now, personally for me, I don't do any editing. I usually give that to my dad or, or, or somebody else to take care of because I I suck at editing. Just I, I was not creative in that regard. But they got to do the editing, okay? And not only that, but either I include that in the price or that separate, whatever the case might be, whatever whatever the customer wants. But whoever is editing those videos, well, guess what? I got to make sure that I pay them appropriately for that for their time because that's time that they have to spend doing it. So the editing is something you got to take into consideration. And then on top of that, revisions. You know, you may think it's awesome, but they may not. They may think, you know what? 
yeah, it might be cool, but look, you know, this is not showcasing what I wanted, or, you know, can you, uh, can you cut this scene a little bit shorter, or can you make it longer, can you speed this up, can you, uh, you know, can you include my information, whatever, which is not a problem, but these are things you gotta factor in, these are, these are revisions, and, like I said, this is also time that you have to dedicate to it, even if you're not the one doing it, but still, it's, it's, it's the time that you have to take, because, the, the more time you spend, that's 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 basically time out of your schedule to, that, that, that you're not doing other things. You're not making money elsewhere. Okay. Uh, so, this is one of the many reasons why, you know, a lot of times people think, oh, well, you know, if I'm flying, uh, if I'm charging, let's just say on average, $100 an hour, damn, $100 an hour, that's amazing. Yeah, but you're not accounting for the other stuff. And as I've said this before, Flying the mission is only like 20% of the total mission. Um, everything else is all the miscellaneous stuff. It's finding the client, making sure you get, with, making sure that the client is happy with, with what you're giving them, making sure that um, you know every, you understand exactly what they want and and and, and what they require. Uh, it's also the post processing and and you know it's it's a process. It's 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 a it's a lot of things you got to take into consideration. So. Um, you know, when people tell me, well, look, you know, you're making, you know, you're making a killing, you know, by, by making a couple hundred an hour, I'm like, that's not really just what I'm doing. It's everything else. Like th there's a lot of work you don't see in the back end. So, you know, in my opinion, when I see pilots that don't price their services correctly, you know, it really, it, it, it's, it's, it makes it very hard, uh, to, to really make money. Um, in the long run because they're not really making a profit. Uh, a lot of people say, well, look, you know, a lot of these bigger companies, you know, they're charging next to nothing. I'm like, yeah, they're charging next to nothing because they're big and they, they, they have volume. So they can, they can absorb all that. As a drone service provider, as a, as a small time drone service provider, you don't really have that luxury because you have to basically feed yourself. You got to feed your family. And on top of that, it's your time. It's your time that you're dedicating to it. It's, 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 it's all the time and effort. And that's not something that's cheap and it shouldn't be cheap. I've had people reach out to me and say, Hey, how much do you charge for this? And I said, well, look with like, I asked, okay, well first, what is it that you're, what is it that you want? What is it that you're looking for? What do you want to accomplish with, with the data that I'm going to capture? It's like, well, I want to be able to, to showcase this or, you know, if it's a cruise ship, like, look, I want to, uh, we want to, we want to like, get some really cool shots of a cruise ship and, you know, uh, reaching port in a certain destination and, you know, we want to make it look really cool. And I'm like, yeah, I'd be more than happy to do it. However, um, like you require, you know, X, Y, and Z. All right, well then this is what's going to cost you. And some people are like, whoa, okay, but that's, that's a little, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not a unreasonable amount, but it's, it's not cheap. I'm like, yeah, I know it's not cheap. That's because I gotta, I gotta know where I'm flying. I gotta make sure I'm allowed to fly there. Uh, I gotta get all my equipment. Sometimes I gotta buy equipment. Sometimes I gotta rent equipment because I don't have everything. Uh, as a matter of fact, one thing I always say is, uh, and wish I would have taken my own advice, is to keep it lean because sometimes, it, just because you have all the equipment in the world doesn't mean you're gonna get the customers. Uh, sometimes, yeah, you gotta go out and you gotta rent equipment and that's fine. You know, you don't, you don't have to have it all. But you also have to, you have to factor a lot of these things in and many people don't really do that appropriately. Um, so yeah, a lot of times people will will try to will be like, oh, okay, wow, like you're you're not cheap. I'm like, I know, and that's for a reason. It's because I got to charge what I got to charge. It's uh, it's not it's not as simple as me just showing up, flying the mission, and then I'm bouncing. It's it's customer service as well. It's all right, you know, I took I got the mission. Do you have everything you need? All right, if you don't, if if it's not according to your standards, okay, well fly it again uh and that's all included in the price as well um you know then also it's uh, you know once i set up the edits and everything it's like okay well is it is it is it to your specifications do you want me to make revisions blah blah customer service it's customer service um and not only that but look it's for me when i when i go out on a on a on a shoot I want to make sure that if I don't have any other customers that day, which happens, I mean, there's some there's some times that it gets very slow. Well, I want to make sure that I make enough so I can cover all my expenses and I can and I can 
pay myself and obviously pay my bills because you know I'm an adult and bills don't stop coming in. You know, I can pay myself for for, for however long I need to. Um, usually I try to make enough money in a single shoot that I can cover all my stuff for one day. Uh, that's that's the like the bare minimum. Uh, but yeah, these are things you gotta you gotta be very uh, mindful of. So Anyways, guys, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. If you one of these, subscribe down below, and these videos will come directly to you. If you have any questions, please reach out. Comment down below. Contribute to the conversation. Let me know what you think. All right, guys. That's